welcome back to Too Sweet Music. I am your host, Hannah. Now, this week we have gone for a little bit more of a jump up, and this week we are going to be looking at Crowded House, which is a very good band that I particularly like, and I think a lot of you guys would actually know who Crowded House are. Of course, there's going to be a few of you that don't really know who they are, but I am here today to tell you who they are. So, Crowded House is a rock band that was formed in Melbourne, Australia in the year of 1985. The founding members of the band were New Zealander Neil Finn, who was the vocalist and guitarist and primary songwriter. And then you have the Australian's drummer Paul Hester and... Bass player Nick Seymour. Later on, more members were added into the group, which included Neil's brother, Tim Finn, and the Americans, Matt Hart and Matt Sherrod. The band was originally active from the years of 1985 to 1996. The band was very consistent for their commercial and critical success in the countries of Australia and New Zealand. So the band members were either Australian or from New Zealand. There was a few New Zealanders, the um, Finn brothers, they were both from New Zealand. So, and then, of course, you uh, have your Australians, Paul and Nick. Uh, They also achieved international chart success in two phases, which started with their self-titled debut album that had reached number 12 on the US charts in 1987 and provided the top hit songs, including Don't Dream It's Over, Love That Song So Much. It's a really good song. I do recommend that you guys go have a listen to it because... It is such an inspirational song. I listen to it a lot. So it is by Crowded House. And then the other song was Something So Strong. I'm sure a lot of you have heard that song on the radio a lot. I think it's particularly on 101.1. Or I think it is on Smooth FM 91.5. I'm I'm not completely sure, but... You can have a look there. Uh, Furthermore, there was more international success that came in the UK, Europe and South Africa with their third and fourth albums, Woodface and Together Alone. That was the name of the two albums. Now, Woodface, that sounds a little bit funny, but I don't think I've heard many of their songs from that album, so I might have some homework to uh, go listen to those. And then their um, eh, compilation, I'm sorry, (laughs) album, Recurring Dream. I think I said that right. I apologize if I haven't. Uh, So this included the hit songs of... Fall at Your Feet, Weather With You, love that song, Distant Sun, Locked Out, Instinct, and Not The Girl You Think You Are. Now, here's some information about the Finn Brothers. Both of the Finn Brothers were awarded an OBE. I'm not sure what that stands for. I might have a look later. But they um, received this in June of 1993 for their amazing contribution for music for New Zealand. And on May 1994, founding Paul Hester left because of family reasons. But he briefly came back for the Farewell to the World concerts in Melbourne and Sydney in 1996. 
that's a huge dedication to a band, I think, to be able to come back. You leave the group for a number of years and then you just come back for the tour. I I think that is um, what made him such a great group member of this uh, team because if you come back after leaving a group just to pursue their dream of like doing the concerts and stuff and doing the tours so the fans can meet them I I really respect him for that uh so Neil Finn had decided he was going to end the group to concentrate on his solo career and he also um wanted to concentrate more on the Finn brothers project with his brother Tim uh so for all you sensitive people here, I would try not to listen to the next, uh, let's just say, 30 seconds because it's a quite a touchy topic and I don't want to make any of you uncomfortable. So, on the 26th of March, 2005, Paul Hester died from a suicide at a young age of 47. He was 47. And that is something extremely sad, I think, because you've just lost someone. No one should lose anyone to suicide. And I I really feel for him. We farewell him. So he wouldn't have been that old. So, on to the better things. In 2006, the group had reformed with a new drummer, Matt Sherrod. He was still in the band, but, you know. And released two more albums in 2007 and 2010, which both successfully hit number one of the Australian album chart. That is amazing. Who else thinks that's amazing to hit number one on two albums? And especially after the loss. Um, so, again, in July of 2010, the group had made a massive achievement of selling the Australian, uh, of selling over 10 million copies of their albums. And in November of 2016, they were inducted into the ARIA, I think I said that right, um, Hall of Fame. After Crowded House got back together in 2006, they are still active to this day. They have two label, label records of Capital and ATO. Now, before I read some of their other achievements, I would just like to acknowledge how well that these guys have done in the past, ha- having sold over 10 million copies of their albums. That is amazing, a massive accomplishment. And I do apologize for rereading a line that was not supposed to happen so I do apologize for that but again before we get on to more stuff I just also want to say that if you guys ever need a band that you can just have a little dance around to that Crowded House is a really good band to be able to just have a dance to it's actually good party music too especially weather with you that that song is so catchy once you hear it you can't get it out of your mind for like days on end it's it's a beautiful song but I'm going to read out the members of them now so members that are still in Crowded House are Neil Finn, Nick Seymour, Mark Hart, Matt Sherrod, past members, Craig Hooper, Paul Hester, T- 
Tim Finn and Peter Jones, which I hadn't seen anything about them in my research. So uh, the people who I hadn't heard of was Craig Hooper and Peter Jones because I think that they were in the very early years so they didn't really do much for the group. So in the years of their fame, they have earned themselves selves several national and international awards. In Australia, the group has won a massive 11 area awards from 26 nominations. That's a lot of nominations and to be able to get 11 out of that 26, even though it's not quite half yet, I still believe that they have done a massive thing for themselves. And they were nominated for the New Zealand Silver Scroll for Don't Stop Now in 2007. All these songs I haven't really heard much, so I have to listen to them. The song Don't Dream It's Over, yet again we have to mention Don't Dream It's Over. That is one of their most famous songs was named 7th Best Australian Song of All Time in 2001. In 2000... Oh, sorry, not 2000. In 1987, Crowded House won American MTV Music Video Award for the Best New Artists for their song, Don't Dream It's Over, again. And it was also nominated for a further three more awards. I didn't quite find out if they actually got the awards or not, but if they did, good on them. In 1994, the group was named International Group of the Year at Brit Awards. Again, in 2009, Don't Dream It's Over was ranked number 50 on the Triple J Hottest 100 of all time, which was all voted by Australian public. That is one of the biggest things that you could ever ask for, having rank a song in number 50 of top 100. So there's 50 songs below it and fifty um, uh, 49 songs below it and 49 songs above it, if you want to be precise, which would be good to be precise. Now, before we go on to our music news and stuff like that, I just want to again acknowledge that this group has been amazing and such an inspiration to many people. Many of your parents would have probably heard it because they were a band back in many of your parents' days. So it's it's amazing because they've just done so much for themselves and to get together or create a band from people that didn't even know each other. That is something that one could only wish for. Let's also um, take a minute to recognise the past members as well that for what they have done for the group as well. But also for the members that are still in the group, that is huge dedication to be able to still be in this group after all these years and still be making music. I'm not completely sure if they are still making music at the moment because, I mean, this um, article I was reading um, was on the internet and I don't know how recent it was or anything, so I don't know if there's any more awards or anything. I'll have to look, but... um. I also don't really know if everything about it is uh, right with the past members and stuff like that. There might be more past members. I don't know. Uh, I don't even know if they're actually still going, but I'm pretty sure that they are still going on with their, uh, what's it called? 
their career line and stuff like that. But I want to retouch on some of my um, favorite parts of this research uh, from my um, Crowded House fan. And I'm a huge fan of them. So I want to like to acknowledge um, that they had um, hit number 12 of the US charts in 1980. Seven. That is amazing to be able to reach a number 12. It's like even better than 50. Another one that I would like to acknowledge is that the Finn brothers, um, for both getting their OBE awards... Another amazing accomplishment just for two brothers. And they must have gotten a well... They must have gotten along very well to be able. Well, anyway, I think I might just finish up for this part. And I'll get on to my music news. And if... I find anything else, I will certainly do so. Anyway, thank you for listening to the Crowded House podcast this week. And I will talk about Aretha Franklin next week, which is going to be acknowledged in the music news. Thank you and have a good day. And now it's time for the music news. Hello and welcome back to Too Sweet Music News. Again, I am your host, Hannah. Now this week we're going to have a little bit more music news considering that our crowded house information didn't go on for too long. So... I have got some more up here to read once I've told you the two. I see quite a few here that you guys might be interested in. But anyway, we are starting off with a juicy story of Madonna. Now, just wait until you think that you liked Madonna. Well, maybe this might make you think differently. We all know about Aretha Franklin who sadly passed away last week. So, Madonna has given her report on her criticism. She made an MTV's Video Music Awards, but Madonna has made the MTV's Video Music Award about her. A tribute to the beloved Aretha Franklin, who sadly passed away last week on the 16th of August. Madonna openly said she wasn't trying to honour the soul legend. That's a little bit far, I think. And on Monday, Madonna appeared at the end of the prize giving to present the Artist of the Year Award. During this, she rambled on about her love for her fellow Detroit, Michigan girl, and she recalled singing her hit song, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, which she had mentioned that was the song that launched her career at an audition Many people shamed Madonna after her speech, claiming she made it all about her. A 30-minute speech which was supposed to honour Aretha was made all about herself. Now, this is an idol to many people. And she has sadly mucked it up. Badly for herself. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible that a person can do this. And as I was saying, she was talking about her fellow Detroit, Michigan girl. But 
how she could turn a tribute from Aretha and turn it into all about her is a very selfish thing to do. And I'm sorry, but I've lost all respect for Madonna. How about you guys? Have you lost all respect for her? I certainly just... I can't believe that she could do something so sinister and oh it's it just makes you cringe how she could do this but we are going to learn a bit more about Aretha Franklin since we are on the topic of Aretha I decided to do my second music news on her and also to tribute the beloved soul singer that we have lost and she will be greatly missed. So, Aretha's music is being played everywhere to honor her. So she has been constantly mess um messaged. I'm sorry, I am gambling on. No, she has been constantly. I forgot the word mentioned. In the radio station of 91.5, which I listen to all the time. It's actually a very good radio station. Please go ahead and listen to it. But um, her hit single, Say a Little Prayer for You, has led the pack at an astonishing number 22. And it set for its first chart entry in 50 years this Friday. Aretha will be missed a lot. But I decided I wanted to do a special tribute t- um, to Aretha for her one week anniversary of her death to honour her properly. And for all you fans, you can listen to her tribute podcast. Now, so I have finished off with all that stuff. But I've got some more music news up here that you might be interested in so i've got one here about taylor swift it says here taylor swift breaks own record for highest earning u.s tour by a woman well for all us women's out there the look what you made me do Singer has been trekking across the U.S. and another and other nations since May 18th on her epic Republican Stadium tour. Her U.S. gigs alone have now made an incredible one hundred and ninety-one dollars and one million. Dollars, that is a hundred and forty-eight million pounds in the U.S. According to Billboard.com, meaning that with eleven American dates still to play, she has surpassed the gross earnings of the previous record holder. Her 1989 world tour, which made $181.5 million in 2015. During the tour, she has averaged earnings of more than $7 million per show with all 27 of her completed dates sold out. Now, that is another huge achievement. I cannot believe how she could do this. Honestly, all tribute to her. Absolutely amazing. Now, let's find some more news on our celebrities we going are we going to get any different 
Let's find out. Ooh, oh, I found one. Pink and Ed Sheeran help British DJ propose. This is adorable. Pink and Ed Sheeran helped a British DJ pull off a special marriage proposal after recording video messages for his future bride. Elliot Holman, who works for a radio station in Norwich, England, secretly recruited the singers to be a part of the big surprise after deciding to pop the question to his girlfriend. I can't pronounce her name. I think it's Bryony. Bryony. Uh, so... He staged the romantic beach proposal while on vacation in Florida and stunned his lady love by playing her two funny clips from the pop stars, both beginning her to say yes, begging her to say yes, sorry. Hi, Brioni. Ed Sheeran here. The perfect hitmaker said in his recording... Elliot is not going to do better than you. So you need to accept it that he needs to marry you and it has to happen and you need to make him very, very happy man. I'm sure he will make you very, very happy lady. A very, very happy lady, sorry. But the fact is there's no one higher on this totem pole than you for him. So you've just got to let it happen. My seal of approval is there. I'm sure that counts for a lot says yes. And Pink added, Elliot Holman would like to ask you if you will be his wife. Please say yes. I mean, if you should, if you should say yes, then you should. Good luck. Luckily for Elliot, the celebrity support worked and Bryony accepted. Recalling the special moment, the groom-to-be told the Norwich Evening News We watched the sunset. I showed her the pink video as she pops the question and then I showed her the ring but said, before you answer, there's somebody else to persuade you, which was Ed Sheeran. Then I said, will you marry me? And she said, of course I will. This is the most adorable thing I have ever ever read in my life honestly what a beautiful way to propose to somebody I all hands on deck for this new soon to be married couple I congratulate them with all my happiness and everything so Beautiful. Let's see if we can find any more. There's not really much more music news at the moment. There's quite a few things, but nothing that I think would really make us go for anything like that. I'll see if I can find anything else. But I'm not too sure that we are going to find anything. Oh, let's... What about rock music news? Let's find out. Album announcements, new tour news. Oh, well, this could work. Okay. Oh, here we go. 
I found out. This is pretty interesting. This was posted six hours ago. Fallout Boy have announced that the Lake Effect Kid EP is being released tonight. Ooh, we barely have time to prepare for this. Here are some facts. Fallout Boy have announced that they teased Lake Effect Kid EP in being released tonight at a midnight Eastern time. That's 5 a.m. in London. In the announcement posted, um, sorry, in the announcement posted to Instagram, the band shared Forever a Lake Effect Kid. The new EP dropping tonight at midnight, ET to celebrate our biggest homecoming yet. Well, here we go. There's uh, another album coming out. So if any of you are a Fall Out Boy fan, then why not go and listen? Oh, okay. I'm doing this specifically for you guys. I don't particularly like this band, but I'm still going to tell you about it because... Panic at the Disco UK and Europe tour dates are incoming. So people have waited for months. You've watched North America get two tours. We've watched the announcement for their tour of Australia. Panic at the Disco are preparing to announce their long-awaited tour of UK and Europe tomorrow, which was posted six hours ago. They're literally announcing the tour tomorrow. So, there you go. You might be able to go see them if you want to go all the way down there. I don't think there is much. Uh, oh, no. Here we go. Another one. And I know a few people who are a fan of this band. 21 Pilots announced a small show. Ahead of the release of their brand new album, Trench, on October 5th, 21 Pilots will be making one off appearance in London. This w show was announced on the 21 Pilots website earlier today. 21 Pilots will play a small one off show at London's Bricks Academy on September 12th, marking the show. First show of the Trench era and their first live appearance since the Tour D Columbus shows in June of last year. So, if any of you are a major fan of this band, I suggest you go check it out because why not? I mean, who wouldn't want to? They've got some very good music like Ride. Love that song. And um, I can't really find anything else. There's not much more interesting news to go on with at the moment. So, let's just go off and do our little tradition about talking about this kind of stuff. Now, I know I've done a lot of these podcasts on these kind of bands. Again, please, if you've got any suggestions, 
next week, yes, I will be doing Aretha Franklin. And then the week after, I'll be doing Lady Gaga, which someone had s- suggested to me already. So I'll keep down a list of people that you guys want to hear about a podcast for. And then I will do my research on them because um, the more people I get, the better it will be for me because then I'll be able to do more research. Try to do like really famous people or really famous bands um, if you don't mind because I already made my mistake with doing Callum Scott um, so early because he he's not really that popular quite yet. So it is it's very hard to do these kind of people and then they don't have like a lot of information about them. So do please consider about doing really famous people. I've had someone also request Queen, so I might do I might do them, but I might do a special edition for them. Um where I do Queen and do the separate, the two people that are left from Queen or the one. I don't know, two or one people are still alive from Queen. So I'll do a special of them on their careers. So uh, keep an eye out on that. Now... We all see we all see music pop up. It's everywhere, like advertisements everywhere. And that is pretty cool. Another one I will possibly do in bandwise is wait for it, the Beatles. I know you guys love the Beatles. I know a lot of people love the Beatles. So why wouldn't I even try not to do it? Like, I'm definitely doing it. Another thing is tonight when you're listening to music... Try to listen to a few of the Crowded House because that would uh, do a lot of help for them and it would be amazing for them to be able to get through all of it and be able, you know, just to be able to do everything. Okay, well, I honestly don't know any other news that I can possibly talk about. Who else finds celebrity fails funny? Now, some things on YouTube that we can actually see uh, with the celebrity fails are hilarious. So, they forget their own words to their songs. Ariana Grande has actually done that a lot of times. And then, uh, Mike, no, not Michael, um, Justin Bieber, <laughs> sorry. Um, he has also forgotten his words to his songs as well. Also, look up his failed attempt for the first time. He was trying to sing Despacito. He goes, Despacito, I don't know the words, so I sing Burrito. That is, it, it's quite funny. I mean, I don't particularly like him. Like, I don't like his music as much. But for you fans of him, <laughs> there you go. You've learned something new. Um, <laughs> so, um, I love m- music because it is a calming way to just let off. After a stressful day, many people just listen to music and it's actually a good stress reliever as well I find that 
when I'm listening to music, all my stress just goes away and I'm not like thinking about anything bad or I I don't I don't think uh negatively and it's just it's a, such a good strategy to use if you are feeling upset and stuff like that you must listen to music because as I always say every single week I mention how good music is and how well it stimulates your mind I I personally just I like to listen to music because I I get stressed a lot and I'm sure a lot of you also get stressed as well everyone gets stressed let's just be honest but the best thing about being able to listen to music is the feeling that you get when you listen to it so you might be listening to a calming song and then you listen to it and it just takes you away into a new a new world and that's what I love about music because you can always find peace in music and that that's what I really love about music because you you listen to music and then you're you're just like taken back with everything that the words are saying and you don't really pay attention uh, to the bad things in your life. Like you're paying attention to what they're actually saying in the music. And I I just love listening to music. It's like my favorite thing. Besides singing, of course, I love to sing. And it... I I don't know why I love it so much. It's just I I found that music is something that everyone can do um when I mean even people who don't think they're talented can do it. Like I think I think that's the best thing to be able to um do just listen to music especially when you're feeling sad and i i often listen to uh music it doesn't matter like what time it is i just listen to it and yeah another singer that i really love everyone should have heard of this singer sia I love her music so much. I I love the song Never Give Up. It's just got a very catchy um tune to it. But you'll be surprised that this song um Never Give Up was in the movie Lion, which um is about it's actually a true story about a little boy who lost his brother and um, he got lost on a train and stuff and he got taken to all this different country and he had to learn to speak English and he had to get adopted by a an Australian family. It's actually a very beautiful movie to go watch and then at the end of the um, movie, you hear this song. And it's just so catchy. Like, you just got to bounce around with it. <laughs> and I also love the song Lucky by, uh, what's his name? Jason Mraz featuring Colby Calais. I love her. She she's got a beautiful voice and they harmonize so beautifully. It's honestly one of the nicest things that you can listen to and it's 
I I just find it so nice to be able to just listen to music. And yeah, so what else should we actually talk about? I know that there's a lot of things to talk about with music, but when you're like constantly talking about it, you just you just kind of you forget on what to say. And that surprisingly happens to me all the time. And quite frankly, it's annoying because, like, you want to know what to say and then you just kind of forget. I, I've, like, <laughs> lost a lot of things to say. Uh, so, what about... I... Does... Sorry, let's speak again. Do any of you guys like to listen to or find out the meaning behind songs? I love to learn about meanings behind songs because it it's such a good way to connect with the actual song. And then when you find out the meaning behind it, it makes you feel so much happier because, yeah, I, I would really appreciate if you guys would actually uh, tell me some more people to, you would like to hear about, like, you got Christina Aguilera, Kelly Clarkson, James Morrison, Pink Floyd, Paul Omar Faith, um, you've got, you've got a lot of people, okay, so, like, just let me know the kind of music that you like, and then you can tell me, that would help me a lot, and I, I really appreciate if, um, you could all give me your feedback on my podcast because who wants a boring podcast? I don't want to be the boring person who just keeps gambling on about random stuff. And that's a nice way to put it. <laughs> I love the song. This um song features in... Uh, what's it called? Paper Planes. It's called Learn to Live um, by a singer. I don't know how to pronounce their name. I think it's Leo, L-I-O-R. And it's such a beautiful song. Like the harmony inside. It's, it is such a beautiful song. But it's also a sad song. So if you don't like sad things, then don't listen to it because... You, you kind of, when you're in a happy mood, you don't want to listen to sad songs. But is it just me? When you guys hear this podcast and you, if you listen to it, please answer this question. Does anybody else, when they are sad, do you listen to sad music? I don't know why I do it. I, I specifically do. I'm fully happy to mention that I do that but does any of you else do that so when you are sad you listen to sad music when you're happy you listen to happy music when you're angry you listen to very violent kind of loud music I it's just like a feeling with feeling I guess like when you listen to sad music and you're sad you can kind of you can just let out your emotions. I guess that's why I do it. But yeah, I would be interested if any of you else um do that as well because it it's so crazy, you know. And I I just honestly I find it funny when like you're sad and then you just go, "Oh, you know what? I am going to listen to sad music." That that's not going to make you feel better, I don't think. But, you know, everyone works differently, I guess. And that that's the best thing about, like, that 
that's the best thing about it because you just yeah uh I don't know why I do it but I just do what other crazy things do we do when we do stuff with music? Sometimes, don't you hate it when you're just naturally kind of humming along to your song? Um, you got your headphones in, you just start singing, and then everyone is quiet, and then you look up and they're all staring at you, and they say, "You got a beautiful voice." It's like, oh, thanks. And then it's like you're in class and then you just start humming. And then next thing you look up and the teacher's standing right over you and say, did you know you were singing with your music? And you're like, um, no. And they said, you're being too loud. And you're like, oh. I mean, like, I'm generally a loud person. Like, the good thing with this is you can't really hear how loud I am actually being when I'm talking. Like, I am so loud all the time. So, that's why I need music. So, when I listen to music, I'm quiet. Which is creepy because I'm never quiet. I just got a song stuck in my head. It's so annoying when you get uh, um songs stuck in your head. And then like when you get it in, sometimes you might actually start talking in that tone. You just go, you just go, just say you were listening to Hello and you go, Hello, I don't know what you are doing. It's so weird. Like, you just start speaking in that, um, the tone of the music. Sometimes it can be annoying. I mean, I guess everyone can be loud at times as well. Like, you know, with me, it's like people, I'm like always in my math class, and then they're like, you're so quiet. And then. I get into English and they're like, you're very chatty. And then I get outside. Now that is a whole new story. So that's why I listen to music to make me be. Also, have you ever noticed when you are singing and then you or you're listening to music and you're in class and then you're all focused on your work and then you just go and you stop writing. You're listening. And the teacher comes over to you and say, why aren't you working? And you're like, but I was. And then you realise you've written two words down. That is Literally the worst. <laughs> but anyway, you can't help it. So I guess everyone does that. But also, what is your favourite thing about music? Is it just the way it makes you feel? Or is it just how you can connect with it? And how you just love every single every single word of the song i i love it when you listen to songs and you're just so focused on what they're saying and then you just completely forget and you're listening you're sitting there and then you fall asleep now one time i recently tried this and I was listening to music and I wasn't really that tired. But I was listening to music and I knew I had to get to sleep. I put my music on and I fell asleep. Anyway, at 9 o'clock I woke up and I found out my light was still on. So I turned that off and I turned my music off and I fell asleep. Asleep. I fell asleep straight away. 
I want you all to try that. Just listen to music. Uh, if you're finding it hard to fall asleep, you listen to some of your favorite music or listen to some calming music and you just fall asleep and it's the best thing because you just realize that music has made you fall asleep and like I'm very tired at the moment so like talking about music and sleeping that's not working so yeah no (laughs) But I also love to listen to music even just for the fun of it. Who remembers when they were little kids and you got the pass the parcel and a party? You know, passing along, you got your music and then the music stops on you. And you get so excited and then the... um. And then you find out that the music just stopped on its own and it wasn't supposed to land on you. That was the worst, you know. <laughs> and um, so also please um, tell me what your favourite um, part about my podcasts are, whether it's the music news or the actual podcast because... If you like the actual podcast better by learning about some artists, I'll make sure I find out extra information and do less of the music news. Or if you like the music news and how I did it this week, then I will do, I will start doing that because the more information and feedback that I get from all of you is going to boost my confidence and then that way I know how to make you all happy with what I'm doing and it it would really be really helpful for me because I I just want the best uh, for all of you so yeah I was uh, looking at um something a while ago. Uh, it was actually a text message, I think. And uh, my uh, someone in my family texts hi, and then about two minutes later they send bye. And <laughs> I I don't know if there's something going on with their phone. Maybe they need to make their phone listen to music. Oh, real comedic. Real comedic, eh? I'm not very funny. (laughs) Anyway. So, another thing about music is that I like... I've lost train of thought. No, another thing I like is being able to, when I'm listening to music, and being able to just relax. That is the best part about it all. Being able to relax is so special, especially after a very, very long day at school and stuff but anyway thank you guys for listening to this podcast I am looking forward to talking to you guys next week and until then see you later guys bye